if you remember from pre-algebra, we used to say find the ratio, in case you forget what a ratio is, find the ratio of 2 to 3. And we wrote that, what? 2 over 3. Also, we used to give you two ratios. Is it is the ratio of two thirds proportional to six nine? Proportional to means are these two equal? And the only way to see if they are equal. If you simplify this and you end up with that answer, then they are equal. That's not the only way, that's one of the ways. But if you divide by 3, this is what? This is a 2 divided by 3, that's a 3. So if you simplify this, that's a 2 thirds. 2 thirds is actually 2 thirds. So they are proportional. So proportional means are these two ratios equal to each other? Or in some cases, we ask you, can you tell me what value will make them proportional? Like if I did x over 12, we said this is equal, this ratio is equal to 2 thirds. Can you tell me what value for x, what value can I use that will make this ratio equal to this ratio? What can I use? Well, there's a couple of ways to do it. One way is, so, well, you know what? This is a 12. This is a 3. To make this is 12, I need to multiply this by 4. If you take the 3 and multiply it by 4, it's going to equal to 12. Well, if you multiply the bottom by 3, by 4, not 3, to make it 12, if you multiply the bottom by 4, it's equal to 12. If you multiply the bottom by 4, you're going to multiply the top by 4. What's 2 times 4? So x over 12 now is equal to what? 2 times 4? 8 over 12. Since this side is equal to this, 12 is the same as 12. The only way these two will equal to each other if x equals to 8. Not a bad way of doing it, but the problem with this method is if we give you a problem like this. Instead of x equals 12, how about x over 8 equals 2 thirds? How do you turn the 3 to 8? What can you multiply the 3 by to make it 8? So it's not as easy as the previous one. The previous one, I can make this number 12 by multiplying it by 4 not here. So maybe I need to come up with a different method that will help me solve them regardless what we have for numbers. And we do have one, it's called the cross multiply. If you multiply this times that, x times 3, which is 3x, it must equal to 2 times 8. What's 2 times 8? 16. Now can you solve this for x? Sure we can. You have a multiplication. The opposite to multiplication is division. We're going to divide both sides by 3 to make it 1x. And x equals 16 over 3. And that's how we solve a proportion. Let's try another one. Using this method. 5 over 6 equals 10 over n. Again, cross multiply. 5 times n is 5n equals 10 times 6, which is what? 60. To solve for n, I'm going to divide this side by 5, which means I have to divide this side by 5. n equals 12. 60 over 5 is 12. 
Let's try this one. 4 over 5 equals P over 10. Again, cross multiply. 4 times 10 is 40. 5 times P is 5P. I need to solve it for P. I need that to be 1P, which means I got to divide this side by 5 to make it a 1. And if I divide this side by 5, I got to divide this by 5. P equals to 8. Okay. Let's see, where do we use the stuff? Some examples for it. Proportion. An example. It's a beautiful sunny day and we have a tree here. And I need to know how tall or the height of the tree there. What is the height of that tree? What's the height of it? What is that equal to? And we're not going to make you climb it. It's too high to climb. I don't want to take a chance of you falling off the tree. Now I know what you think and probably shadow. Okay, let's do a shadow here. This is the shadow of the tree. You measure the length of the shadow is, I don't know, 12 feet. How tall is the tree? Well, that still doesn't help me. So what I might do is say, you know what? How tall are you, Stan? Stan, you're six feet tall? Stan is six feet tall. That's Stan wearing a hat. Let's measure Stan's shadow at the same time. Stan's shadow is four feet. If I measure the shadow of Stan and the shadow of the tree within the same time, the sun didn't move that much. I can do actually some proportion ratios. I can say the ratio of Stan's height to the shadow will be the same as the tree height to its shadow. So Stan's height is six feet, his shadow is four feet. That should be the same as the height of the tree, was it, which is H, to actually the shadow of the tree, which is 12. Cross multiply. Four times H is four H, doesn't matter which side you put them on. 6 times 12. Is that a 72? And to solve for h, we're going to divide both sides by 4 to make it 1h. What is 72 by 4? Is that 18? That tree is 18 feet high or tall. Another example where ratios might be used. You're driving from Boston, Mass to Washington, D.C. And 
you try and see how far Washington DC, you're looking at the map, in the bottom of the map there's a scale. The scale says, this is the scale, one inch equals 50 miles. I made that inch so big there. But the scale says one inch equals 50 miles. So you measure the distance from Boston to Washington. And you go, let me measure that one, two, three, four, five. It looks like about nine inches. So how far Boston from Washington, D.C., or Washington from Boston? How many miles? We can do proportion. We can say one inch is the same as 50 miles. So if my map from Boston to Washington is nine inches, how many miles that is? That is a proportion. Cross multiply. One times x, which is x. Nine times 50, which is what? 450 miles. So based on this scale, based on that distance I measured, I know Boston or Washington DC is roughly 450 miles away from Boston. Okay, let's try a different example. We'll use medical um, example. 125 pound adult 125 pound adult Mr. L there gets a dosage of 2 milliliters of some kind of drugs here. We'll go of, I don't know, particular drugs. I don't want to give you a specific type. Particular drug there. At this rate, How much additional, uh-uh, how much additional? So that person's gonna do, take the two milligram plus some more. What is that more? How much additional drug dose a 175 kilogram or pound, not kilogram, that's a heavy person, kilogram adult requires. How much more? We're talking about the addition. That's, when I say the addition, that's more than the two milligram. So we can set up a proportion. We're saying, okay, if you are 125, you will get two milliliters. If you're 175, 
we're going to give you the two milliliters plus some extra and how much that extra so extra here represent the additional drug dosage how much more that's what x is the additional there you're getting the two plus more and to solve this again we do cross multiply multiply this so 125 times 2 plus x equals 2 times 175. Now let's distribute that one, multiply it through. One twenty five times two is two fifty plus one hundred and twenty five X equals three fifty. Two times one seventy five three fifty. Subtract 250 from both sides. Gone. 125x equals 100. And x equals what? 100 divided by 125. And if you divide by 25, that's 4 over 5, which is 0.8 milliliters so another 0.8 milliliters so the additional you take one pill which is two milliliters in addition to that almost another half a pill half a pill will be one milliliter you need 0.8 Okay. Another example. We might have what we call similar triangles. Similar means they have the same shape, the same look. Just one is a little bit bigger than the other. So these two have the same look. It's called similar triangle. We know this side is 20 centimeters. This side is 10 centimeters. This side is 12 centimeters. And this is unknown. Can you tell me what that unknown is? We can do a ratios here of similar triangles, similar sides. This is the smaller one, that's the larger one. S for the smaller one, L for the larger one. Let's look at this. I can do a ratio of this side to this side of the small triangle. The top to this one, it should be the same as the ratio of this side to this side. So 20 centimeters to 10 should be the same as the ratio of this side, which is x, to this side, which is 12. And again, to solve this one, we will have to cross multiply both sides. x times 10, 10x equals 20 times 12 is what? 240. And to solve that for x, we need to divide this side by 10, which means divide that side by 10. x equals 24 centimeters. This side has to be 24 centimeters.
Let me try one more. We have a board here. I'm not really good at drawing pictures here. This is the board. This is the water here. The speed of the boat is 60 miles per hour in still water. Still water. The water is not moving. The problem with that, the water is actually moving. This water is moving this way. How fast the water is moving, we have no idea. So let's call the speed of the water. Call it x, it's moving. The boat is going this way. 60 miles per hour. Well, we found out that the boat, when it travels in that direction, can cover 70 miles. But if he's going this direction, in this, in the same amount of time, it will cover 80 miles. And the question is, <clears throat> what is the speed of the water? What is x? So again, the question, find the speed of the river. Let's say the river's current. If the boat travels seventy miles up the river. In the same time, it took to travel eighty miles down the river. So find the speed of the river's current, that's x. If it took the boat the same mile to go 70 miles in this direction and 80 miles in that direction. So the time to go up the river is the same as the time to come down the river. Time is the same. In the same time, it says here, same time. Well, you should also, we need to know one more thing before we can touch this problem, that distance equals what? Rate or speed times time, or time equals distance over rate. So let's look at the time to go up the river. That's going to the right in my picture. The distance traveled is what, 70 miles? And what was the rate? How fast was the boat moving? Well, the boat is actually going to be going here, the speed of the boat, which is 60 miles per hour, but you need to subtract from it how fast the water is moving. It should equal, coming down the river, the distance is what? 80 miles traveled. And the speed now is what? The 60 
plus x eh, because the water is pushing you from behind now. Instead of hitting the front, slowing you down, it's pushing you forward. That's why you cover more distance. And to solve this, we're going to do cross multiply. So we're going to have 70 times 60 plus x should equal 80 times 60 minus x. Cross multiply. 70 times 60 plus x is equal to 80 times 60 minus x. Distribute that. 70 times 60, 7 times 6 is 4,200 plus 70x. Eight times six, 4,800 minus what? 80x. Now again, you want all the numbers on one side, all the variables on the opposite side. So the negative 86 has to go to this side. The 4,200 has to go to that side. And when you change side, you change sign. So this is 70x. Changing side, it becomes a plus. You gotta change the sign. 80x equals 4,800, that didn't move. But I'm moving this one to this side, the 4,200. It's plus now, when you bring it to this side, it becomes a minus 4,200. What is 70 plus 80? Is that 150x? What is 4,800 minus 4,200? That's 600. And to solve it for x, we're going to divide by 150 to make it 1. x equals 4 miles per hour. The speed of the reverse current is four miles per hour. That's how fast the water was moving. Another example of proportions.